Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to create a racy matrix in Excel. Now chances are you've got an open Excel workbook in front of you like this and you don't know where to start and I understand it can be very very overwhelming but thankfully by the end of this video you are going to be able to create a racy matrix very quickly and very simply and you can even follow along in real time as you watch this video. Now I've just opened up the end result really so you can see what we're going to create and what you can expect by the end. Now I would just like to mention if you drop a comment down below then I will you know stating that you would like this template then I will respond and I can get this sent over to you at the earliest opportunity and that way if you are short for time you don't need to create this yourself. But having said that, I would just like to quickly discuss the racy matrix and why you would want to create one, and then we'll get into the actual steps. So first and foremost, a racy matrix is a key tool used in project management to track the roles and responsibilities on a project. It's also known as the responsibility and assignment matrix. So if you hear that other term, it is essentially the same thing. Now, the key thing to understand here is that there are four acronyms and these and each letter uh, denotes a different role or responsibility. So first and foremost, we have R and that simply means responsible. So who is assigned to complete the task or deliverable? Next up, we have accountable. So this is the person who will have the final decision making uh, on that specific task. They have the authority and the accountability for the completion of that task. And that's on the task level. Consulted, so that individual is an advisor or a stakeholder or even a, a subject matter expert, otherwise known as, as an SME, who is consulted before the decision is made on that task or deliverable. And lastly, informed, that essentially means that that individual must uh, be informed about a decision or an action for that particular task. So here we go, here is an overview, this is what we're looking to create. So now on to creating the RACI matrix from scratch. So I'm going to open a new tab, so as you can imagine if you open up a new Excel workbook and a new sheet this is what you're going to be faced with. So what I would recommend doing first and foremost is just stating right at the top you know, this is a racy matrix. You want anyone who you send this to or who has access um, to be able to know exactly what it is when they kind of open it up. So what I like to do is I like to bold, so a little bit of formatting. So I'm gonna be showing you some formatting options throughout this video. So I obviously like to bold this. I like to make this very, you know, a lot larger. Um, it starts up at 11 or 12 in terms of the font size. You know, you can change the font as well. This button's very handy. It just enables you to kind of increase the, the font size um, just by clicking up and down here. So just remember those two buttons. So making that nice and big, as you can imagine. Next up, we have the project title. So in this case, um, creating a racy matrix from scratch. And I'm going to double click on the this kind of, so on the column in between the columns there, and that's gonna basically expand the column out to the required length. So it kind of covers all of the, the 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 field to make sure it's not kind of cut off um, as you can sometimes uh, see there. So uh, next up, I'm going to basically create the the table if you like. So this is the actual matrix itself. So we're going to start off by doing it in column B. Um, that way we can kind of keep this, um, you know, quite quite. Uh, it's going to look quite good. So we're going to have deliverable or task here. I'm going to bold this because this is going to be a column header. I'm going to expand that out. Um, we can have the status. Then we're going to basically divide up the different um, individuals uh, who could be working on this project. So we're going to have, and what I like to do here uh, is I like to create basically the different types of, of, of individuals. So we're going to have the sponsorship or the leadership team. I'm going to have the, them kind of listed first. So those kind of people you can imagine are people like, um, you know, your project sponsor, if you like. Uh, it may even be your, your, your senior management team. Those, those kind of roles there. Um, I'm going to merge and center these. 
and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Next up, we've got the project team itself. So as you can imagine, that may be you if you're a project manager. We also are going to have um, perhaps technical leads or anyone kind of working on the project. Again, I'm gonna merge these two here. On the home uh, ribbon, I'm gonna click merge and center. I'm also gonna expand these out so it kind of looks kind of, you see what I mean? It kind of makes it more readable and, and friendly. Also, I'm going to ex highlight over all of these and hit bold. Next up, we kind of got other resources. So this is basically any individual who may fall outside of those two different um, stakeholder groups. So these could be individuals like, um, sorry, that should be down there. This could be individuals like consultants, um, uh, etc. And what I probably should kind of mention here is that it could there could be other roles here. So other role. Um, you, that, that's where you'd put another role, I should say, that's in the sponsorship and leadership team. So every time you kind of include a new role, merge and center um, so that they're kind of aligned there. So consultant, we're gonna, let's say we've got five other roles, merge and center like that, uh, other role one, other role two, you get the kind of idea there. I'll put one more in actually, just for, to make that look kind of more, Logical. Okay, so this is the first bit. What I like to do here is I just like to kind of give this a, um, just because it's the, the, the kind of column headings, I like to give this some kind of the, uh, color. So let's put it in a, a kind of a, a light gray. And just bear in mind that the, the, the template I showed you earlier, I'm not gonna create that exactly. Um, I spelled sponsorship wrong, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not gonna um, kind of create uh, the exact replica um, as I say, if you want that template, I can send that across. I'm just showing you how I would go about creating it. That's what I made earlier, but this is the kind of process. And in the interest of time, I'm going to make it obviously a little bit more simple. Now, one thing you can do with these actually, um, this is really, really useful, is you can format them so that they kind of appear um, slightly differently. Um, and it just looks better on the eye. So highlight all of the, the, the cells, right click, then you want to click format cells. And when it comes to the alignment, um, we want it to kind of, it's kind of good to see it uh, at, a, at a degree angle. So what I've done here is I've gone to the orientation and I've clicked OK. And as you'll see there, this is when you, when you look at a racy matrix, they often have this kind of formatting. And it's just, it just makes things, you know, a lot, um, a lot clearer, really, um, especially if you put them at a, a kind of, uh, at an angle that's more like, um, 90 degrees. So that's very, very useful. I'm going to pull these in now. And as you will see, that will make things a little bit more, uh, be great, uh, a little more easier on the eye. I'm actually going to wrap the text as well. I've clicked wrap text. And as you'll see there, I don't know if you could see that, the sponsorship was cut off by wrapping the text. It basically ensures that everything's kind of visible in the, in, in the, in the, in the first view. I'm going to so I've, I'm also going to put a border around this. So all borders here, and I'm gonna put all borders here just to kind of bring that out a little bit further and you can see it's kind of pulled in. And at the same time, I'm going to remove, um, have no fill there just to make it look a little bit better there as well. So next up, we need to start, we can start considering the phases of the project or perhaps, um, you may not even want to do that. You may want to just do it by task or deliverables. So I'm gonna do it by phases. So we're gonna have phase one here. Let's say we have three tasks. So let's go task one, task. So this could be a task actually or a deliverable, depending on the terminology you want to use. And I'm just gonna drag this down here. And as you'll see, that's gonna automatically give the, the number um, just by dragging the corner down. Of course, these are gonna be very bespoke to your project. Um, so they will, obviously you won't be putting in task and deliverable here, you'll be putting in what you, you kind of need. Um, I'm going to indent these. So as you'll see there, I've just clicked the alignment increase indent to bring them under phase one. And I'm just going to do this for, so I'll need to indent this out. I'm going to bold it. And I'm basically just going to do this for various different phases of the project. So phase two, and that's not very useful, is it? So I'm just gonna literally copy and paste. I've selected all of those, hit Control C, hit Control V, bring this up here, 
call that phase three. Control V, oh, sorry, I need to select those again. Control C, Control V. And as you can see, we now have four different phases and we have the tasks and deliverables. So we're shaping up nicely. Now, status, so that could be something, you know, you could have, um, the status is, some examples could be kind of in progress, completed, those kind of things. Um, so let's say we're working with an in progress and completed. What we're gonna do here is for the status column, we are gonna select the entire column and we're gonna set up something known as, um, it's called data validation. And that essentially means that you are limited in the options that you can select. And we're gonna also gonna use data validation for the rest of the RACI matrix. And that essentially means that anyone who's working with the RACI matrix can only enter specific uh, text entries into that, into whatever you specify. And, and when we come onto these kind of roles, we're gonna, we're gonna basically limit them to, to the, to the, you know, the acronym, so R, A, C, and I, but more on that a little later. First, as I say, let's get back to the status column. So I'm gonna select the column, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna click Format Cells. No, I'm not, I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing to do. See, as you, I've created hundreds of these in the past, but there's always, you always make a mistake. What you need to do is click Data, I apologize, and then you're gonna click Data Validation. And what you wanna do here is, once you've clicked that button here, is click Data Validation. Now, what you want to do is you, on the validation criteria, you want to change this to a list and you want to basically make the options any of the statuses that you want. So we could have in progress, on hold, completed. So these are good ones to start with and that I'd recommend you adding to your AC matrix. So obviously in progress, maybe you, you know you haven't you haven't let the individual aware of, of their role on the project, you know, completed, you could have had that conversation with your stakeholders, etc. So when I hit OK. What's going to happen is you'll notice that it's been applied to every cell in the uh, in the column. But basically, we're going to have the options. So as you'll see, anybody who's now working on this file can only set these three options. So let's just say we want this to be in progress for every single one. And I'm bottom right. I'm dragging it down. So that's obviously where we we may you know we may start originally uh, originally when you first do the kind of racy matrix. So as you can see, we're shaping up nicely. Now onto the actual meat and potatoes of a racy matrix. So what we want to do here is we basically want to um, set up the different um, responsibilities and roles for the different individuals. So here, what we need to do is we need to set up some data validation on the rest of the table um, or matrix, I should say to basically enable the options to only be R, A, C, and I. So again, we're gonna use data validation for that. So I'm going to select all of the cells. I'm gonna select data, data validation, and click the data validation button. Now, here again, we're gonna click on the allow list, and the sources will be R, A, C, I. And what that will do is enable you to basically select the different roles for each of the different individuals against each of the different tasks. And this is what essentially what builds out your racy matrix once all of these have been populated. Now, of course, I'm just putting these in randomly, but you'll notice that um, we only have the four options and this is what you would essentially do on your project. So once I've got a few more in, I will move on to some conditional formatting to basically spruce this up and make it more kind of easier on the eye. So. We've got those in now. In order to, to kind of make these look at a certain way, I'm actually just gonna first select all of these cells and I want to, I want to center them. So I've done that, so they're right in the center uh, and I'm also going to bold them as well. Now, what we can do for the conditional formatting to really finish off the racy matrix is we can go condition, to the conditional formatting button and that's found on the home reel. Um, so you click the conditional formatting and you need to set up some rules. So at the moment we don't have any rules set up. And basically what we want to do here 
is we want to format cells that meet a certain criteria or condition. So we want to format only cells that contain specific text. So anything that contains R, we want to be red, for instance. Okay. Okay. So that's rule one. So we want any cell that contains specific text containing A to be, let's say, a blue. Now, of course, these colors are going to, you're going to, it, it will depend what you want to use, what's easier on the eye. Um, these are just examples for, for how you basically set it up. So, okay, so we've got RA, we need a C and an I, so we need a new rule. So we're going to go format only cells that contain specific text. Of, you could probably guess, I'm going to go C. I'm going to go a nice green on this one. And then finally, we're going to do a not edit, we're going to create one more rule and that will be for the I. So format only cells that contain specific text, I. And when I choose a color, what have we got so far? We've got the red, let's go purple just because I know it's quite different and contrasting. Hit OK. Now hit OK again to kind of confirm that new rule. Now you'll see all the colors here. When I hit apply, this should light up like a Christmas tree. Hopefully, if all is if the rules have been set up and all being well, so wish me luck. <laughs> Typical, right? Can you believe it? I think that could be because. So these are the kind of things just to be aware of when you're creating something. Um, you know, so it looks like, it looks like it's because of. Let's have a look at my rules. Looks like I this worksheet okay so applies to uh, apologies so what why that went wrong is because i haven't selected the cells that um the conditional formatting applies to so if i quickly just show you that so i've set this up so what i what i've done wrong there is i haven't selected all of this so this is only where i want the conditional formatting to apply so if i go through each one and map the table you will see this then lights up like a Christmas tree. So now we've got this applies to, hit apply, there we go, we have it at last. So just remember, I obviously didn't, that when you create your rules that you basically, you you need to, yeah, map, map, you know, where, where, where the formatting is going to apply. So for instance, if I put C in here, a is not going to work because it's not mapped to the reference table. So that really is, in a nutshell, how to create a racy metric. This is basically what it looks like in its kind of basic form. Now you can do a lot of different things. You can you can change things like the the font. Um, you know, well that's quite that's quite bold, isn't it? Um, but you can basically do anything that you that kind of suits you um, here. But this is the kind of basic uh, overview of a racy matrix. As I say, this is. You know, this is a much friendlier version. We've also got an overview of all the different roles. And if you, you know, if you want this particular template, as I say, drop a comment down below and I'll be more than willing to send it over as soon as I can. Uh, and you've got a racy matrix to use right off the bat. And, and that this has got all of the conditional formatting rules set up. Uh, as well. So if this video was useful, please hit the like button. That tells me to kind of continue creating videos like this. And please do subscribe as well. And that really helps me to be able to grow my channel and, and produce more content for you guys as well. So with that said, I hope you have an excellent day. And I wish that this racy matrix is useful for you going forward.